nice and calm as we head out. This is the last Saturday before Drake up actually finished for the season. And as the fish are so happy in the water, the plan was to fish the washing line. What a map of Drake up. Fish were hanging about N boy. Um, when it comes to the washing line, I'll fish three different types of line. Well, breaking strains and types of line, actually. <clears throat> when I'm fishing it on a, a deeper line, I tend to go for a, a heavier 11.2. That's Floriflex strong. Um, when I'm fishing sort of tip lines, I'll actually fish 8.8. .8. However, and this is what I fish my, my washing line on the most, is a floater. And I've got 6.8 fluorocarbon there. Uh, it's a lot lighter, a lot thinner, and the flies behave an awful lot better on a floating line. And my setup, my setup's quite simple. Whether it be a floater, tip line, enter, whatever, my usual standard setup's eight foot to the first fly, first nymph, um, and then five foot and five foot on the point is a, a booby. I always fish a booby. Sometimes I fish a fab. I just I like how the booby holds everything up. Um, it gives me a little bit more control than a fab, I think. So a fab's always sinking. So we got a little bit of footage of the day. Um, it went so windy that we couldn't get an awful lot on camera. We got a few nice bits. So when I'm fishing the washing line, I like to get, I didn't fish stupid long casts. I like to be connected. So my casts are not that long, maybe 15 yards of fly line. And I've got a tip line on here. As you can see, all I'm doing is, given the, the strength of the wind, is I'm keeping up with the flies. I'm doing nothing other than keeping up with the flies. So those flies are sinking all the time. I'm not pulling on the line. Or well, you'd think the speed I was going, I was. I'm not. I'm actually just keeping up. And that's all you should be doing with the washing lines, keeping up. Unless you're fishing lures, I'm looking for a static presentation. Every now and again, I'll give the flies a quick jerky retrieve just to pull them up and back up in the water column, back and let them fall down. Um, I find that works really well for me. But you can see from where I am there, we're right out in open water. And as per usual, sailing clubs out. But luckily, they're a little bit far away from me. And I'm about with my mate, uh, Rob Middleton, on the day. We just fished a comp there the, the week before. Uh, so I knew the fish were high in the water, hence I went with what I went with which we'll look at shortly. We'll look at the, the whole setup shortly. I'm always watching in the hang as well. You'll see my rods continually moving. It doesn't stop. That's just in case a fly, a fish is there, I can pull into them. And to be fair, it doesn't take long before I'm into a fish. My first one, we got a photo of, um, was on the nymphs. And the nymph was right down his throat. And it really was. No big fish on the day. A couple of really nice ones, but nothing big. But really good condition given the time of the year. But yeah, just plotting away with a figure eight retrieve. Never took me long to get into the fish. My setup was very simple, which we'll look at in a second. But I like to play my fish hard. I'm in open water. Unless I'm on the really skinny line, um, the six pound line. I play the fish quite hard. In open water, you can get away with that. I always wet my hands before I handle the fish as well. Nymph out. This one was on the nymph. I had more on the little booby, which you'll look at, but that one was on the nymph. I fished two nymphs on the day. Again, we'll get a closer look at them. Just a little fish. Well conditioned, but small. Angle it and get back to the fishing. Rob was in pretty quickly as well, where we were. Rob is in a hurry at this stage because, like any competition angler, when somebody's catching a little bit more, you tend to concentrate harder. Flies are really quite simple. Um, and these are the flies that I tend to favour at the back end of the year. This will change, don't get me wrong, but at the back end of the year, a little pheasant tail, um, my globe light three head. I really like this fly. Uh, that sits on my top dropper, and that fish is the deepest, believe it or not. That's the deepest fly. And then I've just got a straight dull bat with jungle cock cheeks, black. Just prefer it. Again, time of year, that sits in my middle dropper. 
Jungle Cock cheeks for me are key and little nymphs like that. And this is the sparkle. This is a size 12. It's got really small eyes as well. And it's just a combination of silver and gold, a little bit of pearl. And the body's a black struggle, again with a little bit of UV. And that took most of the fish on the day, this fly on the pipe. And I think the reason for that is it's a mouthful. It's at the back end, but also it was the highest in the water. Um, and it just took the majority of fish, including this one. Just much prefer that booby. You can see the booby in its face there. The fish seem to really like that fly on the day. Um, it caught the majority. I caught a lot that day. I never caught as many as the boys pulling big stuff, but what a day I had. Again, Robin again. Just keen to get back and get fishing. <laughs> but that's the stamp of fish we're getting. We're getting some good ones. Some really good fish. Um, the best fish we had at the end of the day, and it was windy. That's a cracker. But the best fish we had at the end of the day was windy. Um, and I actually had them, I actually had to take a photo of them rather than, um, rather than get a video because it was so windy. There you go, that was the best fish of the day. An absolute cracker. And that one again took the sparkler. You'd think they'd take the nymph, they're that high in the water, but back end of the year they'll pick out that sparkler booby when I fish my washing line. And here's another good fish. Um, got a video of this one again. That black sparkler, you can see the fish an absolute topper. Washing line, get it right, deadly effective even at this time of year.